Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Country Chemist. Today is skincare day. You guys know it's one of my favorite subjects. I am gonna take you back to my bathroom and we're gonna do 8 a.m. morning skincare routine using only K-Beauty or Korean skincare. I'll show you how I prep my skin for makeup, how I can take my face from dull and lackluster to glowing after, um, some tips I've learned using some of these Korean products, some of my favorites I've found, and I'm telling you what, they're some of the best of the best in the whole world. And by the end of this two-part series, I think you're gonna wanna try some K-Beauty if you haven't already. Take it from a skincare junkie, I've tried it all. It is incredible so affordable and so great for the skincare beginner. So if you wanna come check out my morning routine, keep watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and thanks for being here. Okay friends, I am straight out of the shower and we're gonna do a morning skincare routine showing you my favorites in K-Beauty. So if you are brand new to Korean skincare, it can be a little bit overwhelming if you do a Pinterest search or Google it and see that they're kind of known for their 12-step routine. So when I began my skincare journey and actually started washing my face at the age of 34, <laughs> um, I started with Korean skincare. Don't know, Koreans are just known for amazing skin. And it's mostly because in their society, they, they teach their children really young to take care of their skin. And they are known for having some of the best skincare ingredients and products. And it's very affordable as well, which is why I feel like it is one of the best to get started if you are new to skincare, looking into K-Beauty. Their products are vast, and so it can be very overwhelming, um, but I love that they really focus on skin's barrier. And I know I talk about that a lot, but it wasn't until I kind of over wrecked my skin a little bit by using a lot of products in Western culture or a lot more harsh or active ingredients that you think of are gonna do so much good for your skin, but they're so easy to overdo. And so K-Beauty, and I'm not gonna say that they don't have active ingredients because they do, but they, if you look at their actual ingredients and what they focus on in their regimen, it is, highly focused on things that are soothing, moisturize, moisturizing, hydrating, really making sure that the barrier is taken care of first. And I found over my years of experimenting that if you focus on your barrier first, your skin will be healthier and will be able to get even better results from those actives that you're incorporating. And so it's good to start with a nice, base regimen of just skin barrier nourishing ingredients and then adding to it as your skin gets healthier. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through what typically a Korean skincare regimen looks like for both the morning and the evening, but then I'm gonna show you what I do. I don't follow it step by step every day. You guys know I'm always trying a lot of different products as well, but the more K-Beauty brands I try, the more I realize how much I love the product. I can't say I've ever tried anything that I wasn't like, this is good, because it's all very good. Um, especially those that are their top sellers in Korea, they are for a good reason. And so those are the ones I'm always sold on. I try them and I'm like, well, I can see why it's so popular. So since I just got out of the shower, my face is clean. Um, you guys know I typically don't 
re-cleanse my skin in the morning fully with something like a double cleanse. Koreans do usually cleanse in the morning. If you're a beginner, they start with a cleanser, toner, moisturizer, SPF, and that is like their bare minimum. Obviously, it can go up to those 12 steps, which again, I feel like sounds overwhelming and I don't do 12 steps every day, but they also take a lot of care to enjoy the skincare process and they do a lot of things to make them like, like the way that they arrange their regimen is so that you kind of slow down, relax, and it is like the epitome of self-care. And so they're not saying you have to do it every single day, but I find it so beneficial to take one day on the weekend and do the full process. It always makes me feel so much better. So their morning routine, if you are doing the full thing, would be a full double cleanse. And I'll get more into that in the night routine because I always do that at night. Exfoliant, toner, essence, serum, eye cream, moisturizer, SPF. And that's after the double cleanse. That would be nine. Still not the 12 steps, save that for the evening, but that's still, some people are like, that is way too much, you're crazy. Um, but I kind of like to do a happy medium. I typically do more than just a toner and a moisturizer. I'm a serum junkie. Um, I always use serums all the time. And again, get to know your skin. You might realize you don't need a moisturizer. If you're using an SPF that's hydrating enough for you, it totally depends. I always say everyone's skin is very different. So I'm gonna take you through what my morning looks like when I already have clean skin. So I don't typically cleanse. I have very normal skin. It tends to over like dry me out no matter how moisturizing my cleanser is. So I sometimes just use water and a microfiber cloth and kind of get off any excess oil from overnight any remaining skincare on my face from the night before. And I did in the shower, I did exfoliate already. Now, this product is not Korean. It is from Japan, but I have to mention that this is kind of what opened my eyes to skincare from the other side of the globe. And that is my Cure. So this is technically a manual exfoliation but it is unlike any other. So I wonder if it'll work on my hand. It is a gel, it's considered a peeling gel. So what it is, is you do it on dry skin only and you rub it into the skin and it's made up of a lot of polymers. And so you feel all kinds of like gritty, what you think is maybe skin balling up. It's not 100% skin, but some of your skin is in that. The polymers will ball up and take the dead skin with them. And so I use this without fail every three days. Um, this is the only exfoliant that's not a chemical, that's a manual exfoliant that I will ever use because I have rosacea, anything else just aggravated my skin. And so when I discovered the power of a peeling gel, it was life changing. And I realized, and I read like a bottle of this sells every three seconds over in Japan. And then I started looking into K-Beauty, which is even more famous, to be honest. Um, and that's kind of how I got started. So even though it's not a K-Beauty brand, I will link this down below because there are fakes on Amazon, but this was a game changer for me. And I know it has been for a lot of my clients that exfoliators tend to irritate their skin. I'm never going back to a scrub. This is the best. I did do that in the shower, so I am I feel like I've hit my exfoliant step for the day. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about toners and essences because um, an essence is something that is unique to K-Beauty. So I'm sure most of you have heard of toners. Toners tend to be designed to hydrate the skin and balance the skin's pH. Essences, I always thought were so interchangeable with toners, and that's because they technically can be, but they are like a toner on steroids because usually an essence has more of those ingredients that are really gonna impact your skin. It's not just pH, it's going to actually change skin. They're more focused on your concerns. So 
you have fine lines and wrinkles, you can find an essence to help that. So for the longest time, I was actually just skipping the toner, using essences only, and I loved the way my skin looked. You guys know I talk about snail, which I'll get to in a second. Um, that all started, that is K-Beauty. So that's probably one of their most famous things is that they discovered that those farmers working with snails had really soft hands and guess what? Their hands were healing from cuts super fast from dealing with the snail mucin. And then they started incorporating that into their skincare products. And so Korea is also famous for having some out of the ordinary um, ingredients that you don't necessarily find over here in the US. And some of them are just fantastic and have changed my skin so much, especially my skin's bare. Talk about the seven skin method. Um, if you've ever heard of it, and I'm gonna show you how I do it, probably a little bit differently, just because I have a great collection of toners and essences by now. And so I kind of use that same premise in the mornings when my, my skin is feeling dull. So the seven skin method is a method of taking a toner and putting it on seven times. Put it on, let it dry, put on another layer, let it dry. And it's a really great way to kind of give your skin a wake up call, especially if you've been in the sun too much, if you've been traveling, you're on an airplane that dried out your skin. When my skin just feels maybe a little bit dry, dull, um, lacking a little bit of bounce back and elasticity, I will do this in the morning and it gives you an immediate glow up. So you can, all you have to do is use one toner, but I typically like to get the benefits of multiple toners. And so this is what I do. In fact, I even have a mist, which I feel like, um, I actually started on the mist train by reading another skincare book and this one, I grabbed all of my K-Beauty brands, and this is one brand I really like, Peach and Lily. So this is the Glass Skin Veil Mist. So if you've heard the term glass skin, that's K-Beauty. The goal of getting that hydrated, glowing skin that looks like glass all the time, right? It's like what everybody wants. So they have an entire line of for glass skin, and this one, hydrates, gives some glow and exfoliation at the same time. I really like to use this as my first step. So I'm gonna mist, I'm gonna count that as one step. Usually mists are typically a toner in a bottle anyway. So I love this mist because it, you can use it to prep your makeup, you can use it to set your makeup, to to refresh your makeup, but I just like it as a first step to dampen my skin, so that way that toner is gonna absorb better. The next one I'm gonna use, so I'm gonna show you guys, the. I have four toners and two essences, and you guys might be like, that's a lot, but I've slowly kind of accumulated these for different purposes over time, and now they are like one of the first things I look forward to putting on my skin every day. So I got four different brands. Right now, this is like the number one selling toner in Korea. It's, I don't know how to say the brand, Anua, and it's Heart Leaf. So you'll see a lot of products that have Heart Leaf in it, and it's similar to Centella, which I'll get in. I, I talked about that one over on Instagram before, which is amazing. It's similar to that. So really soothing, and you guys know I deal with rosacea, so I can take all the soothing things I can get. And especially like after I, you know, dermaplane my face or my face feels irritated, I will load up on something like this. So this one is gonna be my first step or my second step. This one is really watery. I'm gonna use this one first. So instead of using a cotton round with this method, I really like to just use the palm of my hand and get a large amount. And then I'm just going to Press it into my skin. Sometimes I have to kind of smooth it around a little bit. But now there's been research saying that pressing versus swiping 
really doesn't affect how it's uh, being absorbed, but I don't know. When I'm trying to put like loads of product, I feel like the pressing action helps me a little bit easier. It sometimes depends on the viscosity of like what I'm working with and this one's almost like water. So there is step two. This one's going to be nice and soothing since I just exfoliated. The next one is Peach Slices, which is actually like owned by Peach and Lily. Um, this one is another one with snail. So it has the snail mucin and it's got 95% snail mucin concentrate. So I originally got this because it says it's for blemishes. That's one of the, the benefits of snail is microbial, anti-inflammatory, all of those things when you're getting blemishes, it will help that as well. And so even though there's nothing in this um, really for blemishes, like no kinds of um, salicylic acid or anything like that, it is it has that centella in it and it's got a lot of snail secretion. But if you are, maybe the texture of the snail, which I'll show you in a second, it can be a little slimy. This is not. So if that bothers you, this is a really great alternative. And I typically grab this when I'm needing to fight blemishes as well um, as my toner for the day. But for now, I'm gonna use this as the next step. It's a little bit thicker. I'm gonna do the same thing for step three. Since I just happen to have seven essences and toners, I'm going to go ahead and use them all. I'll be honest, most of the time I don't. I will pick, say, this one and put it on like three times and then maybe another one for the rest. Or sometimes I will just do three or four layers. Like you don't necessarily have to do the full seven, but I'm telling you every once in a while I do it and I can see such a big difference. So the next brand is Glow Recipe, which I'm sure most of you have heard of since it's at Sephora, it's super easy to get. Now granted peach and lily and peach slices, you can get at Ulta and you know, targets that have an Ulta. That's usually where I get mine. Glow recipe, I've shared many, many times. This is probably in my top two for my favorite products that they make. I'll show you the other one in my night routine. Um, it's their Watermelon Glow PHA and BHA Pore Tight Toner, Hydrating and Pore Refining. Okay, so PHA is the weakest of the alpha hydroxy acids, meaning it's going to help break those bonds in between your skin cells and help them turn over faster, which if you have mature skin like me is always needed. Now it can be irritating if you're using a strong AHA. So I like the fact that this has got PHA, which is the weak, weakest polyhydroxy acid. So BHA is beta hydroxy acid. That means it's got salicylic acid, which is the main one. And salicylic acid is the one that can dissolve oil and therefore it can get into your pores and help clear out your pores. But this formula is, is not a, so strong that it's gonna cause irritation. Otherwise, I wouldn't use it in this, in this method at all. I would just use this when I'm breaking out and then kind of use those soothing ingredients over it. So I still got some that I'm gonna put over it that will kind of help. And since I already have two layers, I don't feel like it's gonna cause irritation since I just exfoliated. But that is for my skin. I know my skin by now. And um, the cure is very gentle. Um, I wouldn't be able to do this toner at all if I had just dermaplaned my face because my face would feel, I, I usually get a lot of irritation afterwards. I'm going to go ahead and use this and it's going to help me with, I had a few minor blemishes this morning. Now, if you don't like scents, you might not like this because it does have that fruity watermelon. Um, all of their stuff is very scented, but it is really good. And I should have been bringing this down my neck the whole time. But 
sometimes we forget, right? They say all the way down the truck. I had to go steal this back. It was in my daughter's room because it's one of her favorite brands. It's like the perfect shelfie, right? Like it's just so cute sitting out. But my pet peeve is that there's no ingredients on the packaging, which you guys know me, the chemist and me, I need to be able to remember what, it's hard to remember what's in everything. Granted, I feel like a lot of stuff doesn't have ingredients on the packaging anymore. Who has room to save all these boxes, right? Okay, the next one is actually one I bought for my daughter as well. Um, again, another brand most of you would probably recognize, Laneige. So this brand is also at Sephora. I bought this to test the difference between this and one of my new favorites, which is the Road uh, Glazing Milk that is also a essence, but it is not a K-Beauty brand. This is the one that started by was started by Hailey Bieber. So it is an essence. I feel like Western culture is understanding how amazing essences are. So I wanted to test the difference between the two. And so I bought this one for myself and this one for my daughter. And the ingredients are very similar. In fact, when I'm looking at them, it's I don't think there's gonna be much of a difference at all. So this one is made, it's and it's that milky is made to hydrate. So when you see anything that that clear liquid, usually it is more of a hydrating formula. They also have this in a mist form as well, which I'm gonna try to. So um, very similar. Now this one's going to kind of seal that all in and moisturize. This is the last of my toners, technically. And I find some of these are like fine line between a toner and an essence, to be honest, um, because a lot of these toners nowadays are getting those beneficial ingredients put in similar to what essences always were. But alas, it says on the label, so you can probably see just how hydrated my skin already is after that was five. So we've got two more and I'm doing this in a certain order on purpose. So this one is most similar. We're finally on to our essence category. And this one was is extremely popular as well. So I kind of wanted to see and I think it's a really cool formulation. So this is the Dr. Suricol, um Vegan Kombucha Tea Essence. And so it's got a lot of more antioxidants in this formulation with the kombucha. And I love this dual face. It brings me back to my chemistry days. So what you do is you shake it. And even the instructions will say, you know, do just one layer for this benefit, do two for this, three to get the full benefit. And so sometimes when I'm maybe more pressed for time, I'll just use this three times and that's kind of like my shortened version of this method. You know what's really hard is to get a cat hair off of high, really hydrated skin. Got it. <laughs> After all these, I'm like, ah, it's probably on my sweater. Okay, so this one is, I feel like really hydrating, similar to the milks. Look at that, it looks really similar. If you get way too much, my tip is always, always back of the hands. We age there first. So all of your leftover skincare, put it there. Okay, so that one, and this isn't like a really nice glass bottle. I do, I'm excited to try more from that line. So if you've tried anything, let me know. I'm itching, they sent me a bunch of samples with it and I'm like, ooh. Good. All right, it's time for my holy grail, the one I've been using the longest of everything, the one you, I think it's like one of Amazon's like top sellers in skincare, always and forever. This is the Cause RX, the Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence. They also have a, a like advanced formula and it has um, a niacinamide added to it. So depending if you use a niacinamide serum or something with it in it, you can get that one and it's kind of like bang for, more bang for your buck. But I've been using this 
for so long. This is like my third bottle. I just bought another one. Um, this is the one that's got the typical snail mucin consistency. And so I'm saving it for last because I feel like this is so much thicker, it will lock it all in because we know thinnest to thickest, right? So here she is. So it's it reminds me of glycerin. It's just, you know, you love it or you hate it. So this one you cannot pat on, it does not work. Um, unless you want to have like strings all over your face. This one you want to rub on. And this is one product I feel like I can put all the way up under my eyes. It's one thing that when my skin is screaming or really irritated, I know I can always put it on and it has amazing healing properties. It's going to help my skin heal faster. It's going to soothe it. And it is like, I'd say if you've never done anything for your skin's barrier, I'd start with this. And I know sometimes I get comments like, well, I've been using the essence for a while and I just don't see any benefit. And it's not like a holy grail anti-aging. It's not going to take away dark spots. It's not going to, you know, it's going to help fine lines because it's going to hydrate, but it is more for your barrier. So think of this like a daily vitamin, something that's going to keep your skin healthy and so you can use those active ingredients without irritation this is like what your skin's going to need in order to do that does that make sense so i love this brand it comes in a lot of things um i'll show you another product i have similar for tonight but i mean it comes in everything from like masks and eye creams and patches and different things like that. So I would say start with this one if you've never tried it and let me know what you think. So there you go, there was seven. I'll have to take an after picture. I know it's, my bathroom doesn't have the best lighting um, because the window's over there and the sun is on that side of, yeah, that side of the world right now. I think we can, adequately say that we have used all the essences. Um, I find essences are really great to choose one depending on the goals you're looking for. You don't need seven. I like to try them because they're one of my favorite parts in my regimen, but if you don't want to use one or say you want a one and done or all of it, say you just want something to Hydrate, so even just using a mist or like the Laneige mist is the quickest way to just spray and then go in with your serum. You don't necessarily need one for every purpose, okay? I just wanna make that clear. But I love them and the more I use them, the more I want. I want to try them all because they're my favorite. I used to be a serum junkie and now I'm an essence and toner junkie. Never would have thought it. You know, years ago, like toners were just to remove excess makeup. And now it's like, I don't use it for that whatsoever. Um, completely different purpose and way more fun. Okay, let's go into serums. Now, with that method I just used, I don't always even need a serum. Honestly, I will let that kind of absorb probably a little bit longer than normal. And then I usually just go in with my sunscreen and that'll kind of lock it in, and I got plenty of hydration going on. But you all know I love my serums, so I'm gonna show you some of them I have. This is one that I started, oh my gosh, so long ago. There's barely anything left, and I love this brand because you can get it on Amazon. They have everything, any kind of different ingredient you might be looking for, and it's super affordable and it works. And I'm telling you, I had a friend reach out and was like, I'm getting this really expensive um, peptide hyaluronic serum from the medical esthetician's office. And I'm like, well, she's like, I gotta find something affordable. And I'm telling you guys, this was like hundreds of dollars for one serum. And I looked at the ingredients and there was really not anything that particularly special about it. And I found this, which it's all in Korean, so I can't really read too much. But I'm telling you, this was so similar and 
she bought it and she's like, I love that. I will never buy that serum again. Like what the heck? This was $12. <laughs> like skincare does not have to be expensive. It truly doesn't. It's marked up when you're buying it from someone like that. So Korea has really low manufacturing costs. It's why they can produce really high level products at such a low cost. So this one, oh, it does have, it has aloe, and beta glucan, niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, allotonin. Like it literally has all these different <laughs> peptides as well. It's got matrixyl, argireline, and it was $12. So this is the MA peptide serum um, because it has a matrixyl and it has hyaluronic acid in it. And this is by Cause de Baja. They have, so if you're just looking for a niacinamide, all you have to do is search niacinamide Cause de Baja. They're all like around the $10 mark and you can try it. And I feel like if you don't like it, if it's too sticky or something like if it's a texture thing, if it doesn't give you results, $10, okay, I'm not gonna buy it again. But it was one of the first serums that I'm like, you know what? This skincare is really good for the money. And so yeah, that was the first one I think I got off of Amazon back in the day, which is why it's gone. Anti-aging, hydration, looking for a peptide serum, this would be my pick. Now, if you are one of that's looking for that glass skin I talked about, this is the, and I just got the small travel version so I can pack it. I usually pack this when I'm traveling with my skincare and I don't wanna bring um, all. I will just grab something like this. So this is the Peach and Lily Glass Skin Refining Serum. Um, so this is the serum of this line and it's one of the top selling serums in Korea. It will help you get that glass skin. It has that niacinamide, peptides, but um, this one will help you more with the appearance of pores. So the next two started my love affair with this ingredient. And then the more I started looking into, after I saw the results from it, I realized that this ingredient was put in so many things I'm using and I didn't even realize it. Um, that's why I always say, check your labels, right? So I'm talking about the Centella. So I did an entire video on this ingredient over on Instagram. I can link it below. Um, the brand is Skin1004. I don't know why I always just call it Madagascar Centella. They have an entire line of just Centella products and they're all so good. So I used like a whole bottle of this and then I was like, well, maybe I wanna look for something that is high on Centella but like has other things in it that will do more than just Centella will. So Centella is one of the most regenerative ingredients, one of the most powerful ingredients at this time, in my opinion. In Korean skincare, it is one of the top ingredients. Um, you'll see it in everything because it's very soothing. It's good for redness. So you hear it as Centella, Asiatica, you hear it as Sika. Um, it's in a lot of things um, more soothing, irritation, redness, but it also increases collagen, which is why I saw such great results. It's so soothing. I could take it all the way up to my eyelids. I don't have to worry about any irritation with my highly sensitive eyes and I'm obsessed with it. So that's saying the least. So I found a product that also was mostly centella, um, but it also had niacinamide, ceramides, and peptides, so it had a little bit more anti-aging, pore control, things like that. And even though I used, I used half the bottle, and it was still very good, this one's by Purito, which is another great brand, I went back and bought another bottle of this. And this is just 100% pure, Centella Asiatica Extra. I don't know what it is, but for me, it works better than with other things. This is 49%, but this is 100. So I don't care if I have to layer and use this and then I can still use this, but I am a big fan. And I know I've had a lot of clients reach out after I did that video about the results they're seeing, seeing from theirs and it's, it's even different than what my experience was, but it's all really good. So check your ingredients. Most likely you probably have this in things 
that you don't even know. And it's the soothing aspect of it, the healing of your skin. When I get client questions like, oh, I accidentally like burnt my face with a curling iron or I used a mask and it broke out, broke me out in a rash or something like that. I say, do you have centella? 100% this will heal it faster than anything I have in my collection. So that's why I wanted to make sure I had a bottle on hand because anytime, you never know when you're trying new skincare if something's gonna irritate you. This is the only thing that will take the irritation away in less than a day. Okay, next is from one of my favorite K-Beauty lines and that's Beauty of Joseon. This is Another serum I've already almost gone through. This is their Glow Serum. Now they have several different kinds. I wanna try the next one. Uh, this one is the Propolis and Niacinamide. So Propolis is one of those ingredients you might have seen in more things like, um, I've shared this one before, I'll share this tonight. This Propolis Lip Mask that comes from bees. It's a mixture of resins that bees use to seal their hives. And there's a lot of buzz around it because it's been known to have really great skin softening abilities. So antibacterial and antifungal. This one is good if you have acne prone skin because it's got that added niacinamide as well. It's gonna help those pores stay clear. So this one's great for like, think of it almost like a clarifying serum. That would be like a Korean clarifying serum. A serum without salicylic acid that's not gonna be harsh at all, but will soften your skin while keeping it clear at the same time. It's really great. So the next one is a new favorite. I haven't been using this as long as some of the others, um, but it's like one of their best selling serums over there. And I'm like, I gotta try that because it's supposed to be good for dark spots, which something I'm always working on, right? So it's by Axis Y. This is the Dark Spot Correcting Glow Serum. Another serum really high in niacinamide. 5% niacinamide serum, which is actually pretty high in the niacinamide world. So it's got a lot of niacinamide and it actually is really hydrating. It's got a lot of squalane as well. And I actually really enjoy this formula. So it's like a gel formula, but it is like, it's like minty. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, and everything's in Korean per usual. So maybe it's this Hippify Ramnoids Fruit Extract. I don't know what that is. I've never heard of it. So I might need to do a little research. But um, this one's supposed to be really good for dark spots. So I've been using this. I'm trying a new regimen for my dark spots. I will keep you updated, but I find this really enjoyable. If you don't like scent, you probably won't, but it's like something about it is minty fresh. So today I'm gonna keep it real simple and I'm gonna go in with my Centella because I feel like this is really nice and lightweight. It's just a very liquidy serum. And so I'm just gonna Put this on over all those essences and toners. I always take this one up under my eyes because it helps build collagen and we all know that's an area I know I could benefit from. And then I'm gonna go ahead and that one is so thin it absorbs really fast. This one's thicker but I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my dark spot correcting serum and I like to focus it where I have the most dark spots. Obviously I have them everywhere, <laughs> but I wanna make sure them I get, and then I just put the residual everywhere else. But really enjoying it. It's a great one. Let that absorb while I put on my eye cream. So for the morning skincare, after serum eye cream, and you guys know I, I feel like you can use a lot of these products up to your eyes as long as you aren't prone to milia. All of these are really thin and they're not thick and inclusive that will cause that. So serums are one thing. As long as there's not a really active ingredient that's gonna be harsh, um, like I wouldn't take 
these since there are acids inside this one. I wouldn't take that all the way up to the eyelid because your eyelid skin under here is very thin, very delicate, unlike the rest of your face. But everything else I showed could be. So I would say you don't necessarily need an eye cream if you're just wanting one for hydration. Um, you can get that from a lot of other products. The key with eye cream, in my opinion, is, is there something in it that is going to do something else? More help, right? So this one is from Benton, which is another Korean brand. And I've heard so many amazing things about this one. Something about it's fermentation eye cream. It's got peptides and ceramides and I can't see the rest because it's in Korean. Now, this product is a very different texture. It doesn't feel super hydrating. Um, it's more of a, a silicone-y like texture. Like, look at that. Like you try to get more on your finger, it is a little different. So I typically have to kind of spread it between my fingers first so it kind of gets a smooth application. And then once it's kind of melted in, then I'm gonna just tap it. And I do tap a little on my eyelids, but this isn't one that I feel like spreads very easily if you just go straight in with it. But it is a great choice for mornings. For me, while my serums are absorbing, I will put on my eye cream and then I go in for my lips. Now, I've tried quite a few um, lip treatments from the K-Beauty realm. I'm gonna share a couple tonight for tonight's regimen, but um, here's one from Tony Moly, and I've shared this one before. This one's a snail, a uh, ferment snail lip treatment stick. It's really good. Um, but my new favorite that I've found recently is by Toradin, which is a essence, which I had never heard of. And there's nothing crazy fancy about the packaging or anything like that, but it's got a really nice formulation. Not sticky, not overly goopy or not really much as far as and it's unscented, but I've been using this in the mornings just to kind of give me my lips a little bit of hydration and I really enjoy it. The next step is a lotion and cream. So in K-Beauty, if you have very dry skin, you would actually apply both. Kind of similar to a double cleanse, you would apply a thinner lotion and then you would lock it in with a heavier, thicker cream, even in the mornings. Now, I'm not, a dry skin person, so I typically skip a moisturizer on the daily um, because, well, first of all, I get all my hydration from all those essences that we use. But second of all, my I usually typically like a SPF, a sunscreen that is more of a hydrating formula. So here are my top three right now from Korea. Okay, so the first one is this Purito um, daily go-to sunscreen. Now remember K over in Korea they have different laws and newer SPF filters than we can get over here in the U.S. because in the U.S. sunscreens are treated as a drug and not a cosmetic. So I will be perfectly honest they have far superior <laughs> sunscreens. They're not white cast and chalky and all of those things. They go on like a lotion and they feel amazing on the skin. Like you want to apply them, which in my opinion is key for finding a sunscreen you'll use every day. So this one's really good um, by Purito, which was the same brand as this serum. This one, no, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm obsessed. I bought so many things from this line. Um, when I originally wanted to try it because they were all hyped so much and I see why. When I went to Florida this summer, this is the one I took 
because I knew I wasn't gonna be wearing makeup on the beach. I was just gonna be reapplying my sunscreen over and over again. I was the only one in my family that did not burn, by the way, because I was frequently reapplying. And this one was great because it did not break me out, which is one thing I feel like with sun and sweat and reapplying a heavy, thick sunscreen, typically I feel like I get, you know, breakouts from sunscreen, but this one I did not. So same thing, it's got that Centella I love. This is the Hialu Sika. Sika is another word for Centella. Water Fit Sun Serum. Now, if you see something called a sun serum over there, that's because they have more of a serum-like texture and they're incredible. I mean, look at that. Look at the way it goes in. It's chemical filters, but different than what we can get here. They're amazing. So I am obsessed with this one. Unfortunately though, it has a lot of, I think it has quite a few sil silicones in it. So I don't trust to use this on a day when I'm gonna be applying makeup. And since I'm putting on makeup today, after I finally blow dry my hair, I'm gonna go with my Beauty of Joseon. And this one is a cult favorite for a good reason. Um, this is the Relief Sun Rice Plus Probiotics. Um, so this one's SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 which means it's super good. I have a lot of people that use this one. Again, amazing texture. It's all about the texture for me. And when it feels like a lightweight lotion that actually adds hydration, actually has really great ingredients in it as well to also help my skin in the long run, it's a win. I'm gonna have to find the ingredients list. I wanna say that there might be one silicone derivative in this one. I know it works for me and it works for a lot of my clients, but just a caveat, it might not work for everybody um, because I believe there is one derivative if you are also a Saint user. But for me, it works great. When you're using more of a liquidy type serum-y texture sunscreen, I typically say use three fingers instead of just the two. That is how much you need of sunscreen to cover your entire face, neck, and well, basically just face and neck. Um, number one problem with people that even are applying sunscreen every day, they're not applying enough. You can't just do a little dollop in your hand. It has to be three finger widths is technically the best estimate of your face size. Now, the great thing about these sunscreens is they don't burn your eyes. The, the sun, the white cast will go away. It just might require you to fully I'm talking eyelids. Do you guys know the second place most common place people get melanoma is in their eyes. Yep, I learned that after getting it. So eyelids, thin skin, apply it everywhere. Look at that. I mean, the finish is beautiful. I will take that any day. Fully protected, I always put the rest on the back of my hands. And there you go. That is the way I do a K-Beauty morning routine. So to recap, like if you wanna keep it simple, cleanse, water. If you need a cleanser, I will share some in my video for the evening, but you can keep it real simple and just dampen your skin, apply a favorite serum and a sunscreen if you have normal skin. If you're more blemish prone, you can grab one of these and some serums that might be better for acne and then a really nice lightweight serum. Type sunscreen so it's not too heavy or oily. Daily, if my skin just feels a little lackluster, maybe I'm dry, I'm gonna go in with something hydrating, extra hydrating, hyaluronic, even more hyaluronic, 
to lock it in. And then if your skin's irritated, I'd say stick with those really soothing ingredients and keep it real simple with something you know that's not gonna irritate your skin any further. There's so many different combinations of some of these favorite products that I share that you could try depending on your skin type, your concerns, because again, your concerns might be very different than mine or they might change daily like mine do because skin is not the same every day. It's If you really start paying attention to your skin, you're gonna realize how different it is day to day depending on what you're using or how you're taking care of it. One of the reasons why I have so many of a variety of things is so that I can pick and choose what I need every single day, depending on my skin that day. So I feel like I got my glow back. The seven skin method is probably not a daily thing, but it's a really great tip to kind of have in your back pocket. Maybe for those days that you're like, wow, my skin needs to look great tonight. What the heck? I woke up and it looks so dry and dull try it let me know what you think there you go that's my morning routine for today with some of my faves um be sure to come back and see part two where i'm going to share my nightly routine as always i will link everything i talked about down in the caption below the video if you have any questions do not hesitate to reach out i'm sarah at the i'm happy to help you with your skincare journey as well and as always thank you guys for watching love you